but I'm really, really concerned about my mountain. I mean, I call myself Keeper of the Mountain. Uh, that's what I'm known by. And part of that is just really loving, having a love for the mountains. And here's a good part of the reason why I love the mountains. I mean, look at the surroundings here. Isn't this beautiful? This is a vista from a logging uh, platform or a, a landing, they call it, where when they cut the trees, they drag them all to a central location where they can load them on a truck and then haul them out of the woods. Now, logging raises a lot of concerns with a lot of people. You know, they're about deforestation and the tearing apart of the landscape, etc., etc. And, and uh, some people have, have uh, compared it to, say, raping the land. But what really is going on when logging happens? Now, there's a lot of discussion about clear cuts and, and you know, whether or not they're really something that should happen or not and how they should be done and distances from creeks and all that sort of thing. However, let's take a look at a little bit of evidence here. Uh, in, the, in the good old days, we'll say, let's call them that, the good old days, back in... Uh, pre-1900 era, there was a, everything was old growth because nobody had gotten here to cut anything down. And so when they got here, there was just a few trees per acre, maybe 10 or 20 trees per acre maximum because the trees were so enormous. And it really contributed to a lack of diversity in forest. And there was animals, there was a balance, it was going along okay. But there was a lot of critters that really struggled because there just wasn't enough food for them out there. So they moved on to other areas. Well, once the logging began, it, uh, things changed. And take a look over here, right here in this area. And you'll see that line where the one group of trees begins and the other ends right there in the middle. And they'd be like right, uh, right there. See those trees where those are big trees and then there's little trees here. And then if you look right down here, you'll see where the trees are really small. And what is the significance of that? Well, you see, one thing that happens when an area is clear cut like this area, well, all of this has at one point been clear cut is they replant and people say well the problem with replanting is that there's lack of diversity now because they always plant just one kind of tree whatever the cash crop is well i'd like to draw your attention to take a close look up here at this area right here that was replanted this is probably a 10 years old replant look at those woods does that look like all one kind of tree no, well, no, it's not. There's there a whole variety. Is it just that one little spot? No. Let's take a look over here. We turn around right here. And now let's look at this area. Look at that. That, my friends, is diversity. Biodiversity. Now there's a couple things that you can learn from that. One, you have the biodiversity so that there's a lot of different things for the different animals to do, and that's a good thing. And also, you have forests of every age. You have everything from this brand new forest right here. That's These trees over here that you see are probably about three years old. They're not very big. And then over here in this valley they're probably about six or seven years old and right up above them up there probably about 10 15 years old and it carries on this way all around you have groves of different ages of forests and what that does is gives you a diversity of habitat because different kind of animals are, are attracted to different kinds of habitat and different ages of forest so you end up with more animals, more diversity in animals, 
and then you still have down in the valley down here if you look closely in the valley you'll see there is also room for humans to do some farming well here's an example of a clear cut this is a uh, clear cut from last year uh, all the trees have been cut down and hauled off and logged away and it all looks really barren but not really because if you look closely at the ground you will see all kinds of plant life beginning to spring up out of the ground another thing you're going to see is little trees like this one they're planted all over this land this is what's done I mean, everywhere you look you can see another one here's another one right here Yep, that's what it looks like right at the beginning stages of a clear-cut recovery. You look over here, you see more trees. Everywhere you look, there's little trees. And there are different kinds of trees. And here in about 45, 50 years, this too will be able to be logged again. And during that entire time, this will change... Uh, from one kind of habitat to another and there'll be lots of animals and there's it may not seem like it but there's a lot of animals here right along that tree line over there during the day the deer hide back in that tree line and then in the evening in the morning they come out into the edge of the clearing and eat because this is where their food is that's where their protection is so if you're ever hunting in the mountains Always be along a tree line because that's where you're going to find them. But when people tell you that all loggers do is cut down trees and rape and pillage the, a non-renewable resource, you're looking at it right here. These are crops that have about a 50-year turnaround. Big difference between this and corn, say, for example. You plant it in the spring, you harvest it in the fall. Well, spring and fall in tree years is about 50 years when it comes to commercial growing. Most of this land has been cut three, four, sometimes up to five times since uh, logging began uh, back in the late 1800s. So really, you're not looking at a resource that's being squandered or wasted. You're looking at one that's being managed and grown like any other crop. And that's why you can still go to the lumber yard and buy lumber. Because if we never replanted, it would all be gone today. Man, this is beautiful. I love my mountains. Look at this beauty. It's just breathtaking. It's probably 75 degrees where I'm standing. And look up here on this mountaintop. They still have glaciers and ice and snow. What a beautiful day. Thanks for coming along and thanks for sharing my mountain with me.